guys, it's Tiff back again for another Monday video. And today I have my junk journal out. I have my jelly plate out, the little one. I have the Arteza acrylic paint set that Arteza sent me to use. Um, so I do want to try these out and I'll give you my thoughts as we go through the process. So I'm going right into my junk journal, into a blank page. And I'm just going to start gluing some layers um, down to the background. And I'm using some under paper scraps. Um, these are newsprints that I am, are a newsprint that was just um, kind of pieced and parted over to the side. So I'm just going to glue it down, slap that down, and move on to the next piece of um, scrap that I have to glue it down. And this is a great way just to start um, any page is to just start gluing random stuff down. I do like to see things on the edge of the paper. And because this is a junk journal, um, as you see this um, funny little girl standing over here in her bathing suit, or maybe that's her underwear, I'm not sure. But um, that was out of a calendar. And then that page that I'm working on now was also out of a calendar. So I am going to take this, I believe this is a three by five or two by four. Huh. I probably should have brought it in here while I did the voiceover, but I didn't. And I'm going to go directly in with the cold gray Arteza um paints as well as the white and I'm just brightering this out onto the jelly plate and as you saw I stuck it directly down to the the plastic container that the jelly plate came in and I'm just kind of getting some color and some movement um just what I like to say is starting the energy into the page and then I'm going to go in here I believe that was I didn't bring that color in here, but that was one of the blue colors, and I believe it was, huh, I can't remember now. I'm terrible, terrible, terrible at remembering the colors, and I'm just, like most of these, I'm not using any stencils with the jelly plate. You could, but I'm not, and you can just go in, and it's just really a great way to be messy and carefree because you really can't be too um, specific whenever you're using the jelly plate like a stamp like this. It's just random marks that you're going to get and color that you're going to get directly down to it. So I want to tell you a little bit about what I'm thinking about these paints. So, it is very difficult to um, travel with acrylic paints because the bottoms are, the bottles, not their bottoms, but the bottles are um, typically larger and it's hard to keep them upright. Like, I do a lot of cruises, which I already know, and one of the things that I like to do is I like to bring um, craft supplies and art supplies with me to use on the days that we are out to sea. Well, when I was taking these tubes out, I was thinking about how nice and compact and convenient that the size is. So, like, each of these are 0.74 U.S. fluid ounces. So what that means is they are definitely the size you could fly with and they are like really small. So I'm thinking that these are perfect travel acrylics and that's what I'm going to use these for is I have a cruise coming up in May and I'm going to take these tubes with me to make it easy and convenient. Um, they did send this product to me and there will be a link down below if you're interested in purchasing your own. What I do like is the consistency. It's not a thin, it's not thin and transparent, but it is not a heavy body. So it's kind of like an in-between, but it gives you good coverage. So I was uh, really happy with the way that this page turned out and also um, in the quality of the paints. So now back to the page. As you saw, I just took and ripped up some of the underpaper that had gotten wet. 
and um, added also some washi tape. And now I'm going in with my palette knife and my favorite Deco Arch Gesso. And I'm just making some lighter places because I felt like it had got very uniform and dark in the background. And, well, I don't really care for that much, so... And I'm just going all crazy and wild and trying a bunch of the colors. And I do like the color palette that you get in the 24. I do wish there was a teal color in there. But there's not. Um, it does say on this package that there are like four of the colors could be considered a transparent color. And the packaging is really nice. And I do like that rose because I like pink. So, you know, we already knew that was going to happen. But that was the rose that was in the tube as well. And now I think about right here is where I'm starting to say like, hmm, wonder where this is going. So I'm using, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm using my jelly plate as a palette. And I'm going to go in with some of the Mars Black. And my stencil brush along with this Finabar Prima um, stencil here. And I'm just bringing in some of the darks into the page. And I'm just stenciling around the page and kind of um, getting some flow and movement with that stencil. And then as you see, I just squished out that black. Well, when I did, that made at the top there, it kind of peeled off some of the top layers. And I don't care. Like, that kind of stuff like that doesn't bother me at all. I just roll with it. So, I do know that it's time to dry this page. And so, that's what I did. And then, I got this uh, page at the thrift, not this page, but this actual book at the um, thrift store. And it was about, like, makeup and how to properly apply your makeup and stuff. And so I decided just to rip half of her face apart. <laughs> Are y'all surprised? Probably not at this at this time. So I'm going to wrap or rip part of her face in half. And then I'm going to glue it onto the background that we just worked on. Because, well... What else do you do? You know, just crazy stuff that goes through my head. Besides, poor girl just got her face ripped apart. So now I'm just going to take a pair of scissors to start this because I want to tear this page literally in half. And then I want to create a gap between what was the page and what is the page now. So when I pulled that apart, it kind of lifted some of the glued down papers and collage bits that we put in the beginning, but that's okay. It's no big deal. And now what I'm going to do, and I'm not going to make you guys just like sit through this because it is awkward to film and stitch on camera. So I'm going to have to take it off and kind of move it around. So it is convenient for my right hand to be able to do the stitches. So with that being said, all I'm doing, guys, is I'm going to go um, and I don't know. Is there a certain word to use for the stitch? I don't know if it's a whip stitch. I don't really know what I'm doing when I'm stitching. I'm just stitching. So I go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Um, connecting the bottom to the top and leaving that gap in the middle and then I'm adding a little bit of masking tape and as you see I did not completely um, cover the whole area that I left the gap in and my way of kind of trialing things to see if it's going to work is I just put stuff on there and kind of leave it for a minute and then I come back and then, out of the corner of my eye, I saw this thing, and it said, um, she was a runaway, and I thought it was perfect, um, ripped and, and tattered and stitched back together, and kind of a little bit about, you know, like, our life story is not always rainbows and unicorns. Sometimes we have to go through the bad, the good, and the ugly, and stitch ourselves back together again in order to be a complete person. So I really liked the fact that I found those words that were sitting right there. I think it was kind of 
it kind of the universe that was letting us know that hey um this is perfect for this page isn't it odd when you look at a quote or you look at a a um words in a book and you think oh this was meant for this page and that was kind of one of those moments so i have had people ask me ask me before do you find the words or do you do the page and then find the words I do the page and then find the words, and I think that I just know it when I read it, and I know where it should go, and with all that this girl's been through on this page, I thought that it was fitting for her. So, as you see, I'm just scribbling, and my hair got in the way here, um, just scribbling around and added a little bit of that white paint with the palette knife, and then I had this little jis giblet of... Um, fabric here that I thought would be a great addition to our worn and tattered and stitched back together sole that we are working on here. And so I'm going to put some gel matte medium. This is Liquitex and I'm just going to put that down and then glue it and then glue the words into place. And that's pretty much going to be a wrap guys. What I do is I feel like it needed one more thing. So I grabbed my um, Lyra, Lyra Graphite water soluble stick that was over here to the side. And I just wet it with a paintbrush and I'm going to make some flicks. And I think it really kind of brought the two together because I didn't try not to get it on her face really. It just kind of melds her face into the um, magazine image into the page and then I'm outlining the words. And that's going to be a wrap guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you will uh, take a look at the link below. Um, and like I say, Arteza Paints, I do get some small compensation if you do purchase from the link below. And we also have a coupon, so make sure you take a look down there as well. And make sure to click that subscribe button. We've hit 10,000 subscribers. Thanks to all of you. Until next time, toodaloo.